All right, welcome to Skip This Podcast. What are we doing on a Zoom call, you say? That's probably going to be your first question. Um, I'd like to firstly welcome my co-host and partner in crime, Nathan Brown. How are you, Nathan? Hello, uh, Lucas. I am very well, thank you. I've been having some audio issues at my end, which has been uh, difficult to navigate without my partner in crime and <laughs> all things production, Lucas Goldman. I, I wouldn't really attest it to audio problems. I'd just say my pickiness and my pedanticness of how perfect I want to have things kind of just made it a little bit more of a process than just plugging in a laptop and, and starting to chat. But here my, we are. My loud voice, my loud voice is the problem, <laughs> I think, is where we got to. So I can't turn that down. Uh, you'll get there. Um, just a quick shout out to uh, our show sponsor, Audio Technica. That's what my end is made up of, Audio Technica stuff. Unfortunately, all the stuff is at my house. So um, Nathan is was wearing some competition headphones. At the no, he's not. No, he's not. They're the worst headphones ever. <laughs> but no, um, that's good. So how did we how did we end up uh, not being able to, after thirteen months of doing episodes together? we finally resorted to uh, an episode on Zoom. And why is that, Nathan? Well, life's kind of got in the way in recent times, I would say. I, uh, we, we had really good plans to do an episode every two weeks and we got three in the can straight away. We did um, our 2021 Welcome Back. Uh, we did Head Above Water, Steve from Man Anchor and... Uh, the latest episode, Harry Bink, we're like, yeah, we've got this dialed. We're, we're going to be fortnightly. And it is now um, less than 24 hours before we're meant <laughs> to drop episode five of season two. And here we are. Less than 12. Zoom. <laughs> yeah, less than 12. Yeah, four hours to our. <laughs> and here we are because, yeah, life kind of got in the way as it, as it does. And it has. So, I yeah, think we um we both just agreed, like, uh, I'll get into my sort of last three weeks in a bit, but um, even you've had a pretty busy few weeks and I think it's just like work has ramped up again and everything's trying to get back to normal and it's just gotten a bit nuts. And I think we had, we have seen each other because we hung out the other night, but I think it was one of those sort of end of a bunch of shit fight of a weeks and we were just like, let's just hang out. Let's just leave the show and and what will happen will happen. And then I think we just had a thought yesterday. It's like, okay. should we just jump on a Zoom and chat about it? And it's like, yep. So that's why we're here. That's why we're here, the, the yeah. power of Zoom. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that we didn't end up here sooner. And had it not been for COVID, you probably would have been away a lot more throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So right. the fact that we did get this far without having to do a remote episode is pretty Pretty good on our behalf, I think. Yeah, even if we are just half an hour up the road. From each other, <laughs> but let's, um... Anyway, moving on. All right, so our last episode was pretty epic. Yes. I was yes. uh, the chat with Harry Bink was just amazing. Like his mm -hmm. his outlook on mental health, uh, as he put it, is super simple. But at the same time, it's just, it's very different. And it's one of those things that you just don't, you don't think about mental health or mental fitness in that simpler way. And, and everyone should be thinking about it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, a couple of trippy things from that. I, because obviously um, I know Harry through my nitrous circuit and professional life. And when we started this whole podcast, I really didn't want to get the nitro people I know too involved in it. I thought that would have been just a bit of an easy option to have access to a lot of like um, famous and kind of really unique stories. I kind of want to skip this podcast to stand alone mm. on its own with its own merit and kind of do all the hard work. And now we're kind of reaping the rewards of now having guys like Harry Bink on there. And one of the things that blew me away a lot was a lot of people from my nitro life and action sports life reached out to me and said how brilliant it was and and the 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 great thing that we're doing a lot of people i didn't even know that were listening to the podcast so mm. since then i've had two two really two famous people reach out and say they want to come on and tell tell a story and i think that's that's really great that we kind of continue to break down the barriers of people being ashamed embarrassed to talk mental health mm -hmm. and mental fitness so um that was probably the biggest takeaway f f 
from it for me. It's I think it's tracking now to be the the most listened to episode in the history of Skip Skip this podcast, which is kind of pretty pretty special to think we're still kind of doing better numbers than before and it's going to beat it's going to beat probably as early this week at our previous number one episode which is matty morris another nitro circus guy um security guard guy kind of i credit with saving my life like mm. um 18 months ago and um we inspired him to be a big tough guy and kind of talk about his feelings and now he's launched his own podcast in the last few weeks zero limits podcast so Shout out to Matty Morris and um, what he's doing and kind of helping a whole bunch of return servicemen and ar- Army, Navy guys kind of be open about talking to their feelings, which I think mm. is, you know, is the message we've been trying to spread this whole time. So, yeah, I think we can take take a lot of credit for getting Matty out of his comfort zone and, and um, stories like Harry hopefully will continue to let people talk about their feelings. Mm. And it's pretty awesome that, like, uh, they're two very different audiences that have uh, caused these two episodes to go viral. Like Maddie, obviously, was the uh, the military sort of involvement, and we saw on the posts of when we were posting that that a lot of the listeners that we got were like ex services and people who had been on the same sort of uh, journey as Maddie. And then this time, it's that real sort of. Uh, action sports crowd that um, are, are into Harry Bink and, and learning more about sort of his Monday to Friday, like outside of, of what he does yeah. in professional sports. And yes. and I think that's really cool that uh, we've, we've sort of hit two different target audiences uh, and still, still posting those numbers with people who it might be a totally different audience altogether. So yeah, to know that it's an, a new 400 or 450 sort of audience uh, that we've added to that list of our already awesome listeners, um, yeah, that's just really cool to know that that's a, another shitload of people that we're helping. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, mental health and mental fitness doesn't discriminate. It affects everyone in one way or another. So, mm. yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. And the other – I tell you – Tell you the other trippy thing that happened. So um, obviously Harry has been doing some work with Cooper Chapman, the mm. human factory, and we we actually kind of um, said on our on the previous episode we'd love to get we'd love to get Cooper on the show. Cooper ended up reaching out to us through the Good Human Factory and was like, "Yeah, dude, love what you're doing. Um, keen to um, keen to come on the podcast." Oh yeah, sweet, sweet. We'll hook it up. He's he's based up on the up on the Goldie or up on Kira, up in the kind of northern New South Wales, right on the border somewhere. I don't fucking know. Um, <laughs> anyway, up where the surf's way better. And so he's coming down for the surfing. So I'm like, yeah, dude, let's um let's hook it up next month. And then I was in Byron Bay the weekend before last. Byron. So first time I've ever been into Byron and left Byron sober. It was kind of weird. <laughs> it's, it's different, but that's a story for another day. Um and so on the Sunday we're leaving and we're walking, me and my partner Jamie were walking back for breakfast. I'm like, because I know who Cooper Chapman is because he's yeah. a famous, famous surfer and and but I more know him for um what he's what he's been doing with the Good Human Factory and that that message. And I'm like, Cooper, <laughs> Cooper, and and he's like, yeah, yeah. And he looks at me and because you know he's a he's a person of um fame so so he gets stopped by dickheads all the time in the yeah. street and especially in byron bay where there's lots of oh. dickheads on the street i've been that dickhead many a times <laughs> and so i'm like cooper shake it nathan brown skip this podcast like, <laughs> yeah what cooper it's the first time i've ever introduced myself as nathan brown from skip this podcast like, brownie and so we got to chatting and it was just um it was just such a trip, and I, t- I texted you straight away, and you're like, dude, it's just fate. And I feel like mm. this journey has been a lot of fate, fateful moments, good and bad. But that was just, it was just so cool. And we chatted for about twenty minutes, and then yeah, off he went to wherever he was going, and I went back to Sydney, and yeah, that's, that's so sick. Story. I, yeah, I like cool. you. You kind of downplayed uh, the fact of when he reached out to us because. Like in no uncertain terms, we have been hunting Cooper for a fair while. Like mm-hmm. uh, he he is kind of while like while while he's not the biggest person we could reach for, 
Um, what he's doing in this space is just so much better than what everyone else is doing. And I think when we saw what he was doing early on, we were just so excited by it. We we're like, fuck yeah, that's amazing. That's the kind of person we want to have on this show. Like he's trying to do what we're doing, but in a, in a little bit of a different way. And he's using yeah. his, uh, his platform. reach to, and his platform to sort of get to all these people yeah. and kind of make uh, chatting about mental fitness like cool. And yeah. he's doing such a good thing. And I love that you were like, yeah, sweet, let's look it up. But like you texted me and we were like schoolgirls. Like we were that excited. We were fucking Coopers. Coopers. And I was like, yeah. he hasn't followed our page yet. He's followed you. And like you were like, oh, fuck, I'll get him to do it. And then sure enough, yeah. he started following and he messaged me and, and it was just, it was yeah. great. I can't wait to have him on. It's going to be sick. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I was laughing as well because editing the Harry episode, I – when we left the episode, I was like, oh, you forgot to do the fits and fast five, but you didn't. You actually got the questions in there, but we just forgot to say the fits and fast five. Oh. And should we, but, should we do the fits and fast five? I was thinking maybe we should do it in our own episode. Um, uh-huh. But yeah. So now I think, or not now? Well, let's do it now. Okay. You know the fit. <laughs> uh, Lucas, what's your, who, was your, um, who was your childhood hero? I think. It was like a mixture of like your Kelly Slater's, your Tiger Woods's. So it's kind of like the upper echelon of sporting stars. Jeff Toovey, that guy. <laughs> Go Manly. <laughs> Go I bet, Manly. But Jeff's never been in that three, like Kelly Slater, Tiger Woods, Jeff Toovey. I think the second one was your hero now, is it? Yeah, who's your adult hero? Um, I'm going to – you've got it now? Do you want to do it again? No, that's the first. Uh, okay. Hey, welcome to um, the Fits and Fast Five. See, this is, yeah, this is what happens when we're not organised, well, I'm not organised. No, that's good. Good intro. Lucas Goldman, welcome to the Fits and Fast Five. Who was your, ch- <laughs> who was your childhood hero? Uh, probably along the lines of Kelly Slater, Tiger Woods, Jeff Toovey, Manly Stars, all those guys. Yeah. All right, as an adult, who was your hero? Who is your hero as an adult? Uh, I have, to, like, I mean... I think I, I did a post recently on my uh, personal page and after after what this last year has brought, um, I think my idea of hero is just totally different to what it used to be. Like it, a hero used to be someone that I kind of wanted to be. Um, I kind of looked up to them and stuff like that. But to me now, a hero is just someone who uh, I could never be on the same level as. Like it, it's someone who um does life the way that i wish i could uh handles uh, mental fitness and handles life the way that i wish i could and it's just someone that is sort of out of reach to be uh, uh, to use just a basic word to be awesome and it's definitely uh, a 50 50 split of my wife and my son now like just the, the things that they've been through in this past year let alone having to put up with me and my and my um, lack of <laughs> lack of emotional uh, sort of um, grip stability. Uh, yeah, um, and yeah, it's just it's no longer someone who can hit the ball really far or play a great game. Like it's it's just someone who knows how to handle everything that life gets thrown at them, famous or not. Yes. All right. Well, Sorry, that was meant to be a fast five. Minutes. Fast. Right. All right. Question three. You're, you're running out of time. This is like um, family feud. You've got eight. You've got eight seconds to answer the final three questions. Okay. What's What's your favourite thing about Lucas Goldman? Um, I think now just using uh, using where I'm at in life as as a tool to help others. What's your least favourite thing about Lucas Goldman? Um. Oh, I think sometimes I get lost in trying to do things properly um, rather than sort of just seeing things for what they are. And um, I don't don't know how to articulate that properly, but it's basically I'll spend so long trying to to make things perfect or um, make things the way that I'm used to them being rather than just getting things done and doing the right thing. I just realised I'm wearing a Fitzum shirt. How good. <laughs> Perfect. Product placement. 
I, accidentally perfect. Um, when some last question, when someone says mental health, what does Lucas Goldman think? Oh God, it's. I think it, I would be. I don't know. I'd be stupid to not just say skip this podcast. Just comes to mind, but I know that's a very. Um, I don't know egotistical way of looking at it, but I guess I guess it's if someone just said not skip this podcast, I would look at you, I would look at my wife, I would look at my son, I would look at people like Gus Wallen, like all the yeah. things that have been the sort of rock in my life in the past year. Very good. I've got to remember that. <laughs> I gotta remember the question to ask you now. So Nathan, this is the first yes. time that the fits and fast five has been turned on you. Uh, who was your childhood hero? Oh, I think it'd have to be a manly player. It could be any one of Cliffy Lyons, Jeff Tooby, Steve Menzies. I actually turned into a giddy adult a few years ago and got to meet Steve Menzies, so my childhood hero. Um, 25 years later, I got to meet him in person and I was like, yeah, I was, I was like a little kid. And then, and then I also see Jeff Tooby quite regularly um, – around the neighbourhood and I have been known to yell, there's got to be an investigation at him from my balcony. So, yeah, we haven't actually met. And if we did meet in person, I'd say despite him being five foot nothing, he would probably headbutt me. <laughs> he probably would. Um, as an adult, who's your hero? Um, I'd say my mum probably. I think um, well before I put her through the kind of trauma of the last few years, not probably not including the last 12 months, I, I think I've always kind of admired her being the glue of the family and then kind of just doing so much for so many for, for, for nothing in, for wanting nothing in return, but, but your love, I think I'd say my mum. Nice. Yep. She's awesome. Um, and probably the, um, um, unashamedly number one fan of skip this podcast. I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's your favorite thing about Nathan Brown? Oh, God. Well, listen, I know I'm funny. <laughs> but I also know I also know that that can be a bit too much at times. So maybe that's my least. Oh, you know what? Here, like, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm the life of the party. So I'd say, but I think I'm also, I've got this other side. To the people that know me, I've got a really soft, sensitive side and um, like to do everything I can for anyone I know. So I'd say that. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. What's your least favourite thing about Nathan Brown? Oh, God. Well, listen, obviously I'm loud and obnoxious and that can be um, – that can grind on people a bit. But I would say, geez, I, I'm not very good at putting – like closing cupboards or um, <laughs> putting lids on things. Um, I, I, I've got no filter. Like that gets me in trouble on the daily. I'd say, yeah, sometimes just knowing when to shut up. That's hilarious. I don't, and, I don't know how to do that. And when uh, someone says mental health, mental fitness, what do you think of? Um, I would probably say that I think of, I would have loved to have been asked this question 18 months ago because if I had have been asked that question 18 months ago, I would have said probably just suck it up. It's no such thing. Now I would say I still like don't worry alone. I still think that's like Gus's kind of tagline for gotcha mm. for life is don't worry alone. I think it's um, such a great saying because I kind of live that. I live worrying alone and, and, and shit, it almost killed me. So it's like I know now it's what I – what skip this is all about is is encouraging people to talk and you don't have to talk in a public forum like like we do you can just talk to your friend like i still have people reaching out to me just wanting to chat and they just know that i'm a kind of uh, judgment free um close person to talk to and and like a bolt so i'd say mm. don't worry alone that's good how did that feel yeah it's cool yeah i think i hopefully pissed out at uh, fitz was happy with that <laughs> I feel like that, that's probably the first time uh, in a few episodes that we've actually turned turned it back on ourselves and mm -hmm. had a bit of a reflection on ourselves rather than talk about other people. Yeah, I think I think we probably need to do it a bit more often. Not not just always like 
there's so many great guests and inspirational stories, but I think people do want to hear a little bit from us as well. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why we're doing this Zoom and we haven't really done any podcasting for three weeks is because we've got shit going on in our lives. So mm. what's what's been happening with you? Why 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 have we why had we down tools on the podcast? So I think um last episode I think you asked me how Heath was after his procedure. Um, at that stage, everything was all good. Um, we had pretty much done his procedure. The, the surgeon at the time said that uh, he doesn't think that there's anything to worry about. Everything looks really good. So we're in pretty high spirits and, and we even had our, um, our team at Randwick tell us that we were doing such a, such a good job uh, with Heath and that he's doing really well. But, uh, I think it was the uh, Thursday or the Friday after we recorded that week and it was uh, we got a yes. phone call saying that uh, they had found some bacteria after one, after his procedure and that they had to basically take him in and, and have a 14-day hospital stint um, and he would have to wear a little port that uh, was basically plugged into his body and he would be on an, an IV antibiotic for 24 hours a day for 14 days. Um, and so that was a pretty, pretty bitter pill to swallow, like after being on such a high, um, and like hospitals just aren't made for a one year old, like it, the, the worst, I think the worst part is that he's not sick. So it was just a very early catch that they have to go in and they have to attack it really hard and get rid of it. Um, and it's for his well being later on. But, um, if, if you didn't know that this was going on if we hadn't have done this uh, procedure the couple of weeks before to find out what was going on in there we wouldn't have even known for like a few months that anything was wrong so he's got the energy of like a one-year-old he's running around the cots in the hospitals and it's, it's just a bit of a nightmare but um i think it was the the friday morning uh i sent you a text saying that i do have a story for our next episode <laughs> And yeah. I think it was, Ned Flanders, um, it was Ned Flanders came out and basically I went to the gym in the morning, um, the morning that we were meant to be taking heat to the hospital. And there's a, uh, I go to the 5am class down at, um, down at Manly and I parked in a car park cause there was, there was no spots. And as I went in, uh, there was a, like a maintenance person driving in in a gator and the, all the gates were up. So I drove in, I went, drove up to him and said, oh, What's going on? Do I need a ticket or anything like that? And they're like, nah, you don't need a ticket. It's fine. It'll just be open when you want to go. I'm like, ah, oh, sweet. So I went, went and did the gym and um, went, got back to the car after afterwards and basically was doing good for time. Um, we had to have Heath in the in at, um, the hospital at about 8 o'clock. So I was making good time. Anyway, I went to drive out and the gates are down and I was like, oh, I don't have a ticket. So I'm pressing the buzzer for someone to listen to me and it's just ringing out and I, I reverse down this skinny alleyway to get back down to where the pay station is and I'm ringing the phone number there it's not working um and eventually after about 20 minutes this guy comes up and he goes oh I'm leaving and I'm like okay cool so I went in behind him he gets up to the gate and oh you ghosted through you know no, that, no. that's illegal I was see I was I was aiming for a ghosting and anyway I see his arm come out and he presses the buzzer as well and i'm like hang on i bet he's come in the same class as me but and he doesn't have a ticket either and so he gets out of the car and he's like well, i don't know what to do and i'm like dude i've been trying to ring these guys for 20 minutes like the number that's there isn't even for the parking place it's for a security company that looks after the roller door um we're pretty much stuck and the pylons between getting in and out are, are, are giant so there's like no way to get through Anyway, after about 20 or 30 minutes of me stressing out and I had no reception in the carport, so I had to run out the top to actually make a phone call to Ash to tell her that um, I can't get out of this car park. Um, I was sort of, I was getting on the edge and, and then basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically this, almost done diddly, this, done diddly. Yeah, this guy just kept repeating all the things that I'd already done. He's like, why don't we try this? I'm like, I've already tried that. It didn't fucking work. Like then no one's answering. I don't know what to do. Uh, and so in the end, um, we went, we had kind of exhausted all our options. And I looked at this guy and I said, I'm going to rip this gate off. 
do you care? And he's like, I feel like we've tried everything. So I said, fine. So I just pushed on the gate, broke the gate open, and then we both drove out. And I got home and I was like, I walked in and Ash is like, what's going on? <laughs> like, I was like, it was a good half an hour, 45 minutes after my thing. I'm still sweating, but I'm like, my vein in my head's popping out. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. She's like, don't worry about it. We've, we've actually been delayed so, till later anyway. <laughs> so you, you've just you've just admitted to a crime. Yeah. I, I mean, well, look, to be honest, I think whoever's finally seen the security footage, they probably have gone, yeah, okay, he was well within his right to actually break his way out of yeah. this gate. This is um, like, um, this is reminds me of the Ben Jones episode. Just, the, uh, just <laughs> what's the what's the what's the Michael Douglas movie again? I want a cheeseburger. <laughs> I want a cheeseburger. I just want a cheeseburger. <laughs> oh well, okay, yes, that's good, mate. Well, I think um, maybe some anger management classes. But, yeah, um, so I think well. Maybe, that was as good as an anger management class because I wasn't angry after that. Um, and yeah, it was I mean, weird. I think um, when you told me the news about Heath and having to go in for another procedure, it it hit me a little different this time because you know now I'm going to be a dad myself, and mm. I think I've kind of lived the journey of um, Heath and his kind of procedures and in and out of hospital and. I think your, your your beautiful wife and my best friend Ash has count that there's too many days in hospital to count. You you, you need a um, calculator to count it. But I think Ash did a stat for you. I think it was he's he's spent about twenty three percent of his life in hospital. Yeah, and that's that's a lot. Like if yeah. you're looking at if you're looking at a three hundred and six <laughs> three hundred and sixty five day year. Um, that would be 182. That would be approximately 90, 87 days in hospital, I mm. think. But it just felt, this one felt a little bit differently because I'm going to be a dad soon and it, it just cut a little bit differently. And mm. I think that was when we made the decision to just, you know, really just park park the podcast mm. for the last couple of weeks and why we're kind of long story long whilst while we're, um, why we're here on Zoom and, um, yeah, I did go to Byron Bay also. But, um. <laughs> I think I think the hardest part this time has been the fact that um, you guys are pregnant and Mitch and Catherine have just welcomed their little Harry into the world and like yeah, we met yeah met Harry on the weekend. It, it's almost oh. been it's almost been a bit of that recluse, recluse back into wanting to keep it to ourselves because. We just want you guys to like have a really good experience, whether it be pre or post pregnancy, and so it that's been the hardest part is because we don't want to, and you should never do this is you don't want to you don't want to burden other people, and I, I use that word a lot heavy, more heavily than I used to use that word because I know that it is just a cop out for talking about your feelings, yeah. um, but at the same time it's just like we know that not all. Uh, kids go through this we know that it is just a a special thing but the fact that he has breezed through it like he he had a fucking backpack on for two weeks with a bottle on we tried ash came up with the best idea to just kind of make it a little bit not only more convenient not only like a bit cooler than what they gave us for him to wear but just something that makes it seem a, a bit less um less of a, a hospital thing but also convenience like he just had a backpack on and he could run around and do what he did normally and Little monkey backpack it was pretty funny yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah he's just he's just through it and it, it was amazing ash had to sleep next to him to make sure he didn't sort of strangle himself yeah, even though i tried it. even though i attempted to say let me just do it like and she was just mm-hmm. like no nah, i just need to do this i, I wouldn't sleep knowing that uh, I wasn't next to him and stuff like that. So, again, yeah. going back to why she's my fucking hero. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's a she's a strong human being. Mm. So but yeah. On the lighter so, side, yeah. on the lighter side, Heath's all clear. He's all good. Yep. He's back to a, a, a wireless baby, um, and <laughs> he's lo- loving his cot again. So oh, he, he is brought there for five G. Back on the five day. Be careful, don't. <laughs> Don't talk too ill of 5G. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so we're all good. Uh, but looking back on you guys, you're, you're over halfway, aren't you? Yeah, we we um, we felt the baby kick. Well, I felt the baby oh. kick for the first time last week. So that was um, That's the best. That was a trip. 
that was a trip. Uh, I see. I'm learning so much about the um, about, about the um, female anatomy, and it's like it's fucking freaky. But Am basically, right? the um, the 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 placenta has attached to the front of the belly, so it makes it a harder, bit harder to kick. For, harder harder for um, external feelings of yep. the baby kicking. So, so Jamie's felt it for a, a couple of weeks now internally, but the placenta is acting as like a shield. Mm. And um, apparently the placenta can form in like one of five or six different places. Yeah. For, for such, such a trip, the human body. So I felt kicks for the first time a week ago. And yeah, I was like, damn, what a special feeling. Yeah, it's the it's best. Like, this little little bait. So then we had our 20-week scans and then um, – Jamie was a bit sick on the weekend, so it was the first kind of. It's probably the first hurdle we faced, and we actually yeah. spent a bit of time up at up at the hospital just because we're like, "Shit, what's going on?" And yeah, and it was um, we all of a sudden we couldn't feel the baby, and and we kind of both hit the panic button pretty quickly, mm. and called a doctor, and they said just go up to the hospital, and you know we ended up sitting up at that hospital for hours, and eventually got the. Um, good news that she was she had a, um, a virus with, but it didn't affect the baby at all oh, that's so great. she's been like kind of violently ill the past couple of days but baby is still kind of kicking around like a lunatic in there now that's so, awesome um, i think that's one that thing that was a scare because yeah. i think for us um we're kind of very much learning on the fly like we're just like it was just panics so it's just like you think you're kind of prepared for a lot of stuff like we like the um things that are easy to prepare for like we've got we've upgraded the fit we've got a family car now we've we've the calais gone the, the calais hey listen the calais is for sale <laughs> on carsales.com and it is it's a regrettable sale but it's not really family um uh, not really a family wagon the westy mobile so yeah it's online <laughs> for uh I'll tell you what if someone uses the um um, password skip this podcast you can have it for seven grand oh there's a deal that's a deal it's on there for nine <laughs> i'll take six. Oh, that's hilarious <laughs> well i didn't so, I, didn't, I didn't mean to cut in on the uh the actual baby stuff to go to car stuff but i think it's one thing that everyone uh i know we did it where you kind of you don't want to jump to a conclusion and and have to go to hospital when in actual fact it's just it's such a better response to just go to the hospital mm. and they would keep it's saying like, it to you like yeah just go up there yeah i i the northern beaches hospital has been however many years old three or four and i would never been and i've now been three times in the past week because we had our 20 week scan we had um we had this scare yesterday and then i had to go up there for some scans for my back stuff so i was like now i now i know like everywhere to go in this hospital and it's fucking, it's fucking pimping up there you know they don't, <laughs> they don't mate i tell you what next time i'm in the car park up there i might rip off a gate knowing what they charge us to park there but if that I happens might, in the calais i might have some tips in that that sense but i don't think they're tips that i could share on here but yeah just we'll I, chat I run I run through a couple of boom <laughs> gates as a teenager so that was in a, as a human not as a car though sorry mum um so yeah what else is what else have you upgraded you've obviously had to yeah we're moving houses so we've been just been doing some really like extreme olympic level adulting just doing it all at once <laughs> so we found a place to live up in chroma with a pool so it's pretty exciting to be in a house for the first time in shit first time i've been lived in a house for I don't know. Probably the Long Marie house. <laughs> wow. No, I'm in a house. Actually, the last time I lived in a house was with was you. Was it there? <laughs> Damn, and that's another time that some people want to forget. 2008. Uh, so. Use the term house loosely, I think. Mm, yeah, hole. A, a free <laughs> sort of freestanding residence. Four walls. Yeah. Yeah. Four, yeah walls. four walls that we tried to set on fire. Four walls at the start. At the start, yeah. <laughs> Shit. So, yeah, so I've been doing that super busy at work and, you know, about to go away for a couple of weeks to film um, a mm. whole heap of stuff for Nitro World Games, <laughs> link up with Harry in person, which is exciting, uh, Willie awesome. and, and a bunch of other guys. So that's been um, 
that's been consuming me right now. So haven't really had a chance to really do a lot, a lot of dad research. So like things like, I didn't know that you didn't feed a baby water. Yeah. It's just, it, yeah. It even doesn't need any water. It, yeah. It, well, I mean, it depends on uh, the situation, I guess, whether it's formula. Oh, it's different. Well, I mean, like breast milk has pretty much enough. Breast milk has everything. Has all the Why fluids. Why can't adults have it? <laughs> adults have it. Don't, I don't think you should go around asking that question. But then okay. if, if we actually, we had Heath on formula for the majority of his early days, which is made up of water anyway. So um, there's a fair bit of water in that. Um, we also st- were... On our sense of things, we still can't give Heath uh, tap water. It has to be uh-huh. sort of boiled and filtered just because oh, he's prone he's to more snobs. bacteria. It's not that we're snobs. Like we don't give him Fiji water or something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're not snobs. That's a legitimate yeah, reason. You know, there's yeah. just there's a lot of bacteria in, uh, in, the, in the pipeways of Sydney that you and I can deal with and our bodies can deal uh-huh. with, but his can't. So I think that's kind of also what goes into very small babies and making sure that they're not uh, open to catching anything that they aren't used yeah. to. They don't really eat anything either. Well, no, they don't eat much. Um, it's fucking weird. They, you kind of only start on solids around sort of the earliest point, like six months. Yeah, and those gross fucking shitty nappies don't smell. Uh, that's the best. It's the best time when they don't stink. <laughs> But like, what when they start smelling when they start eating? Yeah, pretty much. My kid's not eating nothing. <laughs> and I mean, in, in actual fact, I say that, but their their very first poo, uh, which is called meconium, is like a really thick, tarry thing, and that stinks. And what is that one or like? Just, is that a period of pooing? Meconium? No, it's. I mean, it's uh, essentially their first ever. Their solid first ship. ever. First ever, it's sort of like a build up of stuff inside them when they're in, from when they're inside, and basically it's just this dark, tarry, sort of really sticky, um, sort of uh, formed thing. It's really oh. dark and it stinks, oh, as you can so imagine. That, that, you're describing my shit after a two day bender. <laughs> you know what? You you you're screwing your face up at it, um, but to to someone like me and Ash, like the next time we uh, sort of go down that road See and the next time thing. we have a baby, if that happens, that's just yeah. going to be the most happiest time for us because when that yeah. happens, that's that means everything's all it's good, everything's thing. working. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably the only thing like I think about right now that really like I'm assuming happy, healthy baby, the thing that scares me the most is like my weak um, bowel and, <laughs> and sensitivity to smell, like thought of changing a nappy a shitty nappy is like something that like gives me anxiety. It gets easier. Like honestly, like when, when I met Ash, she couldn't even say the word poo. Mm. And I think getting a dog really helped that. You still don't pick up your dog's poos. but nah, getting a, poop and run. <laughs> getting a dog, I think, sort of weakened it a little bit. But then when it becomes something that like is your flesh and blood, like uh, you end up just easier. looking past it. Yeah, yeah. I'm bring on the sleep deprivation. I I've been depriving myself of sleep since as long as I can remember. I've been prepping. I've been prepping for this, but everyone says you don't know that this level of tiredness. But we'll see. Yeah, it, Challenge accepted on that. Yeah. Part. Again, like I've I've met so many people who've had kids, and I think I made a bold claim once that like I would never complain about uh, lack of sleep because of child, and. Yeah. I, I'm going to stick to that. Like I'm, I definitely have, have had days where I've been the most tired I've ever been because of like Heath's been up all night or something like that. But I never at, at any point felt uh, sort of in a moment where I was complaining. Like I would never complain about it. Like I'm, you kind of get past that and you end up being, it's like a thankful, a thankful hurt, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. It's like right. you're that tired but... At the same time, all it takes is like uh, his his eyes to look at you, look you in the eyes, or a smile, or something like that, and mm, it's it just it. it makes it all so worth it. And, yeah. and it just the yeah. things that have been shit in the past like hour just disappear because he smiled at you. Yeah, 
that's good. Yeah. All right. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. 22 weeks. Incoming. Baby Brown. Little girl. I can't wait. But anyway, keep keep your questions coming in the future. I'm happy to answer yep. it. I, I do agree with what you said earlier is the amount you learn about the female anatomy is just incredible. And it makes you realize how much they skipped over when you're at school. I think yeah, I mentioned that. On, I think I mentioned that when we started this episode. It was just like the way that um, a, a conception happens was just the most basic form that it could be when we're at school. It's like this happens, this happens, this happens. But yeah, there's so many in between. <laughs> there's so yeah, well, there's a, then a placenta turns up. Most people placenta. do that. We like to do yeah. things differently over here. But. Yeah, apart from yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> that's a story that's already been yeah, told. Yeah, story about the time. Too. Anyway, what's, you can. What's, what else do we have to do? We've got we've got a massive week this week, don't we? We got two charity events. Oh fuck! We're involved yeah, in. yeah, yes, two so charity events. Friday is Loop the Lake with Fitzem. Um, yes, that's going great, guns. I think we're I think we're about a thousand at the moment, about a thousand short of the target, which I think is twenty yeah. grand. So. Yes, uh, we're, we'll that. we're very close. I think we'll get through it. I think the, the raffle's starting to take off and, and you can find all those yep. details in our bio. Um, it's over 10 grand worth, worth of prizes and some really good prizes yeah. in there from yeah. electronics to artworks and um, and mental health, first aid courses and yeah. Mitch, Mitch Woods is now. I need to win a pair of those Audio Technica headphones because I can't hear <laughs> shit with these fucking shitty airport ones right now. You should next next show. You should just take your set of headphones with you, and then and then we're done. But then you need to remember to bring the headphones to each episode. Yeah, which that's going to be, might be the struggle. If I can't, that will the struggle. <laughs> I don't need a couple of pairs. Anyway, so loop the lake. I've yep. been uh, I've been doing some running training. Um, I don't normally run, so. It's it's a test. It's a very different. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling it in the muscles because it is a different sort of group than I'm used to, sort of exercising. But I think it'll be right uh, as long as we, like the torrential rain kind of eases a little bit. It might be a bit tough doing it in the rain. But I then look at the paddle boarders and I think, oh well, they've got it worse than me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, Gray. I bought, I bought uh, two sets of. Um double D batteries for my um, megaphone so I'm all my training is complete <laughs> uh, I've ruled myself out due to um, back injury so I will be with Clint Welsh from Chubby Welsh Autos I'll be manning the uh, site and the athlete recovery tent with, yeah uh, I think we've had a, a, a couple of people just in the last couple of days just a bit, pull up a bit lame so um, there'll still be a lot of people helping the out. co-organizer. <laughs> I didn't want to mention it. I didn't want to mention that. Adam, no, but yeah. yeah we right. So yeah, Adam, we Adam will be there with you. He'll be on the megaphone too. And we're obviously yeah. going to record a fair bit down there while we're there and we'll chat to Adam oh, and yeah. talk about Jaffa and Same. all that sort of stuff and what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And then the next day or the next night, you're involved in the uh, 24-hour swim. Yeah, the head above uh, water swim so it starts at i think 3 p.m on the saturday so i think i'm i'm signed up to do an 11 p.m swim and a 3 a.m swim it's going to be fun with my back but i think i can just be there and be in the water so um it should I'm be not, warmer in the water I, i'm not gonna lie i'm not exactly looking forward to it you know um when in the fits of fast five earlier i mentioned that um sometimes i just need to shut my mouth and um um not talk not talk and this is the <laughs> instance of me talking and committing to this and committing to it twice so yeah i'll be there for a um back-to-back -back days of charity and then scored an invite from wardy who was our guest number two of season two i think is that right and, uh, um, yeah guess Guess three, I think. Guess number three. Guess number three. Because we did us, Steve from Man Anchor and um, Wardy from Head Above Water. So um, I've committed to him. So they're doing great things. They're closing in on a six-figure donation figure to to Life and mm -hmm. mental fitness. So there's a whole host of those people that we've met along this journey will be down there. Steve Gamble from Man Anchor, Pete Burge um, from Peer here, who's one of the founding fathers of the head above water 
um, and it, who actually introduced me to Wardy, the founder. So um, I, if nothing else, it's going to be a great time to kind of mingle with with a lot of people in the same space and meet a, meet a bunch of people. Meditation for Men is going to be down there. Then that um, that that swimming podcast is down there as well. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a busy weekend. And Sick. and you're not going I, to be there because no. you're, you're you're getting away for the weekend it's, yourself. I stitched you up. I when we were talking to Wardy, I kind of agreed at the time that we would do this knowing that i'm going to be away that weekend so uh, yeah, i think you can yeah. probably blame me for you having to be involved in that and um and on your own without me uh That's but cause, i'm mate. glad you G- are Gus, great Gus course Wallen and co will be down there and yeah it's absolutely brilliant course and We've got to practice what we preach, right? I think that's, that's what it this, is. That's what this is, and, I and I'm of, I'm super proud of you, even with your your back issues getting in the water. It's probably going to be good for yeah, you. Yeah, it's easier to do that than uh, run and bike and paddleboard the day before. So yeah, that's I'll it. be support staff on Friday and athlete on Saturday. Athlete inverted commas. You're an athlete finally. Well, on that, no- <laughs> sponsored. on that note, I think we should probably wrap this up, Nath. It's been a good yes. catch up. What, where can people, what can people do to donate? We'll put so some links up. Well, links are all in our bio. You, I've, yeah. On our site, we've just, <laughs> we don't have a swipe up. Swipe We're not that left. cool. Swipe right. We've got, um, we've just got the raffle running on our page, on our yep. bio. We'll post some links somewhere. But all the money goes to the same spot. So yes. the only difference is that if you're donating uh, to or if you're buying raffle tickets, it's as good as a donation and it goes straight yep. into the funds that are being raised uh, yes. by Fitzum. Yep. Uh, and you can win a prize if, if you're lucky enough. Yeah, you win some shit. Uh, or alternatively, if you do want to just donate, just go to Fitzum's uh, link in their bio uh, on Facebook or Instagram. And then they've got links to uh, the actual donation page, which is on Facebook. Tax, so. tax deductible. Tax deductible. Tax deductible. Anything oh, over $2, hey, I think. You, you know, you, I'll tell you a quick shit story. So you know how I do my other little side po- side podcast, the Micah and Brownie show? It's over yeah, on the Twitch channel. Yeah, yeah it's po- a podcast. The Twitch channel. <laughs> the, Twitch, the Twitch. Over on the Twitch. On the Facebook. Over on the YouTube. Yeah, I run the Facebook. Please go. We got a sponsor actually, so I am a sponsored um, talker now, and it's spot we're sponsored by Tax Act. The double, which is what? an American company, so you can do your tax and win shit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, to all our Australian listeners, you okay, can't use that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but there's 23 percent of our listeners are um, not in Australia, so well, there you go. So you just do yeah, it. Analytics. Do I get a cut from this? Because you've just obviously plugged that on our show now. So. I don't. I don't get a cut of nothing, mate. <laughs> I, man, I do that show like this. I do this shit, that show for free. It's a labor of love. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, on, on that it note, it is time for chewing. So on that time. note, we've got a head. Well, buddy, it's um, great to see you. It's been to good to catch up. Life. I think, um, regardless of whether we're recording it, it's been good to see Absolutely. your face. Say hi to Jamie too. for me. I will say hi to Ash and Heath and Clyde for me. And I will. Then, um, I'll see you on Friday at the uh, Loop the Lake. Can't wait. All right. Chat buddy, then, buddy. dude. Love you, man.